Get in care. Stay in care. Live well. Facts and opinions. And Call us here at the radio station. You're going to get involved in this conversation. Your friends all over town. Nothing sexier than free. So check out freecondosmemphis.org and get some. Let's talk about sex. We'll be right back. About two more minutes. Want to talk about sex? Talk about condoms at freecondomsmemphis.org. Get some before you get some. Freecondomsmemphis.org. Let's talk about sex, baby. Go get tested for HIV AIDS because HIV AIDS has become the third leading cause of death among African Americans between the ages of 25 and 34. Even more surprising is the fact that this disease has become the leading cause of death for African American women between the ages of 25 and 34. The spread of HIV AIDS is the single greatest health crisis currently confronting African Americans. Join the Cathedral Praise Church of Memphis Incorporated each Sunday at 12.30 p.m. for our spirit Field worship service and each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for our Bible study. You do not want to miss these power pack services. We are a church for all people, and we welcome you as we transform the Memphis culture. The church is located inside Bun Presbyterian Church at 561 South Prescott Street, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Darnell Goose, Jr., Senior Pastor of the Cathedral Praise Church of Memphis Incorporated, and I hope to see you there. This is the city. This is their story. I mean, we got left. Some names have been changed. And last commercial. They're going to give you the facts, just the facts. Some call this a city of crime. When they're done, it's going to be the city that cares a lot. This is the city, Memphis, Tennessee, where fearless, inspired, on fire, hungry rabble of revolutionaries has transformed hearts and minds. Not with weapons, but with their own brand of compassion, integrity, and hard work. All they're asking is for you to join their movement. It's easy to join with a donation of $20, $50, or $100. And it's all for the nonprofit organization we with relationships we unleashed. Going. With this donation, you will help enhance the three core principles of education, Vehicle. empowerment, and enrichment to the LGBTQ community. It and looks a hot mess. Go to www.relationshipunleashed.com. On the World Wide Web, relationshipunleashed.com. All donations are tax deductible. Come on, join the movement. By the way, I don't need a badge or a gun. I carry a microphone, bud. Bob. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Hold on. Uh, walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Woo. Walk it like I'm talking. You. Yeah. Walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Woo. Walk it like I'm talking. Hey. Walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Woo. Walk it like I'm talking. Talk it, walk it like I'm talking. This is the live show on KWAM 98 Talk Radio. We educate and power rich the community. This is an Boys radio show. And we want to give a shout out to James Shaw in, uh, from Nashville, the young man who uh, wrestled the man, took the the, um, the assault rifle away where four people was killed. Unlike our great president, Orange Man, who didn't give him a shout out, but he gave the people in Charlottesville a shout out, called them upstanding citizens. And I think this man was an upstanding citizen. He needs a uh, medal of honor, so we're going to give him one from the only four radio show. And that shows you how racist Orange Man is. Go ahead. Let's start our show. I think you like uh, Trump. I don't call his name. That's a whole <laughs> lot of time giving him uh, attention. And, and, and well, I had to give him promote his brand. I had to give a man a kudos because he didn't give Orange Man didn't give a man anything a Pokemon. So I gave James Shaw his kudos. Okay, okay. So you ready? This your radio show. Let's go. This your radio show. We're going to talk about uh, Bill Cosby. And the verdict that was rendered on the other day, uh, finding him guilty on the three charges. Sexual assault. So this is my argument, and this is the position I'm going to take. I'm, I'm on the, the side of the victims. Okay, victims. So why, the big question, the big elephant in the room is why did it take so long for the victims to come forward, like some 30 plus years and, you know, all of those things. And... My, what I want to say is that if, you, if you've never been a victim of sexual assault or had any kind of post-traumatic stress syndrome, then you can't question uh, the timing of when somebody is ready to walk that walk and also to relive 
that that uh, that situation that happened to them. And uh, it's not on your time, and it's on it's on their time. And unless you've been involved with something of this magnitude, then I think uh, we need to exercise a little compassion. And I, one thing that I know for sure is that, that that has really messed up the psyche of a lot of Americans is that they uh, keep remembering Bill Cosby as uh, Mr. Huxtable from the Cosby Show, and when he played uh, I Spy and uh, uh, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kid, and he had a, a great and a long uh, career uh, in in uh, movies and theater and comedy, stand-up comedy, and he, he he was uplifted and put above standards that uh, ordinary people weren't measured by. And so now to see this person that's being uh, portrayed in the media as a sexual predator and a monster for over 50-something years, it's hard for people to process that. So we have a lot of cognitive dissidents kicking in with people, and they cannot believe it. They keep tying America's father, that he's, he was the father of America's dad. Is He cannot do those things. And then what happens, they side with him, and then they turn on the victims. And that in itself lends one of the reasons that people don't come forward because nobody will believe them. You have a big hurdle to overcome, overcome when you go against somebody of that status with that type of money. It comes privilege and entitlement, and there you go. So we want to get to the facts today about exactly what he was found guilty on. And so that when you decide that you want to make uh, a, a, a judgment about Bill Cosby, we're going to give you some receipts today. So I give my first receipt so they can help paint the picture of what you're dealing with. And I don't want to call him a monster. But I do want to call him uh, a sexual predator. And the reason that I call him a sexual predator because I've had, uh, I looked at some old footage. You can go to your YouTube and you can YouTube Bill Cosby interview on Larry King Live. Where Bill Cosby talks and actually he laughs and he gloats, he and Larry King, about putting Spanish fly in women drinks and using and having their way with women and that it was a popular thing, and he even had a joke about it. You just need as much of a pen to put in the drop, and then all of a sudden you can just have your way, and oh my God, and he was just sitting there like he couldn't wait to leave the show so he could find him a victim. And uh, when I was sitting there watching it, and it's a, a long video, and it's a short, that goes straight to the clip, it's about a minute and 40 seconds. Go to your YouTube, and YouTube Bill Cosby on Larry King Live talking about Spanish fly. And that, that was in 1994 when he was talking about how he used Spanish fly on women. That's my first point that I'm going to make to build up my case against Bill Cosby. Come on, David. Well, well the issue is this. You have uh, more than 50 women who testified during this trial. And in the previous trial, the judge did not allow any of the women to testify. And the reason why this trial um, was has not met the statute of limitation because it was 14 years ago, and where he was accused no. of drugging. Okay, go ahead. What? Because it sound it sound it sound confusing when you say that. So the other women could not press charges or file a lawsuit because the statute of limitation had run out. Criminal charges. Criminal charges. Right. They could do civil. Right. But he did this 14 years ago. And so this woman, uh, Constance, she, Andrea Constance, she filed a lawsuit and they had a deposition and they went forth in 2004. She was an employee at Temple University where he served on the board. She was the women's basketball, she was on the women's basketball team, but she worked for the women's basketball team. And so that's how they ended up meeting. But this was 14 years ago, so her statute of limitation was still, uh, still good. And he paid her $3.8 million after he gave a deposition uh, regarding this and during that deposition uh, that was released and uh, violated they said violated the court's orders of the release of the deposition uh, he admitted to drugging her and matter of fact they brought out today that this same attorney was the same attorney who uh, Hogan Hulk Hogan used to uh, seal his case up against the, uh, the, the the porn star tape that he made that came out a while back 
and that uh, lawyer got in trouble because of that. So they're thinking that the lawyer did this, released this documents. I saw this today on the news that he released these documents of the court ceiling. So he may get in some trouble. But nevertheless, in this testimony, uh, Bill Cosby did admit to uh, drugging her when he was questioned during the deposition of this original case in 2004. Well, it was in his home that when this incident took place. Mm -hmm. And he also admitted to having, he said it was consensual sex with her. But while she was uh, <laughs> uh, drugged up and during the time that they did have sex, at no time did she tell him that she didn't want to have sex. And how can I tell you I don't want to have sex when I'm drugged up? I can't tell you I want to have sex. So um, the Miss Miss um, Andrea Constan, she talked about um, pills and, and 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 things that how Cosby guided her to the couch, and she was slipping in and out of consciousness, and that um, that he, he you know he penetrated her forcefully, and her. Just she just went through all the all of the whole uh, act, the whole act, and that she was incapacitated and that she couldn't fight back, and she wanted to stop. She couldn't say nothing. She couldn't move her hands or legs. She couldn't do nothing to fight him off. And uh, so the secret deposition took place in 2006, people, and uh, it, it was it was allowed to be read in court, and it went through all of his admission about this incident, and that he admitted that he gave her quaaludes, uh, the powerful sedative drugs, and he, he gave it to women he wanted to have sex with in the past. He admitted this. This is not a witch hunt because Bill Cosby wanted to buy NBC, and uh, it started in 2005 when he was talking about NBC and uh, the conspiracy theory to take our black man down. Bill Cosby admitted that he did this in his deposition that was supposed to remain secret for 10 years. But um, the, the issue is this. I'm trying to figure out why would you drug women who were willing, and some of the women came forward and said they were willing to have sex and do whatever that he wanted them to do. And so maybe, uh, now I'm going to call him sick. Maybe he's a sick person because he likes sex with unconscious individuals because if you have over 50 reports of individuals coming forward saying that these pills and these Spanish flies and all this stuff was given to them. Apparently he had some fetish for uh, unconscious women and sex. So that's a sick individual. So I'm going to go on the and call him sick because of that. So now we need to figure out what's going on. Why is he doing this if it's consensual? Some of the people say it was consensual. Some say it wasn't. So we got to figure out what's going on. But um, uh, my next question is why... I got another one for you. Why was this woman... At his house anyway. Well, I mean, that's not the question. No, no, I'm not talking about I understand the drugs. I'm, if we're meeting. But if I go to your house and I know you got a wife and I know all this stuff take place, that should be a safe space. It, they may have had a, a, a relationship. Uh -uh. They may have had a relationship. You, Bill Cosby, was a, a person that was at Temple University. He gave millions of dollars to Temple University. He was an upstanding uh, alumni to that university. He was a trusted individual. If Bill Cosby invited me to his house, I would go to his house. Matter of fact, we're going to visit some people's house. I'm not going to call their name next month. When we, when but we, everyone in we Hollywood knew these people. that... We don't know that we're going to the house because we got to meet him. No. Everyone in Hollywood knew this guy was sick. But she wasn't in Hollywood. She was in she was a, 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 a person for Temple University. They knew he was so, sick at Temple. I don't believe it. Oh, come on now. But there you go. You blame the victim. Again. No, no, no. I never said so her. Don't say what she was doing in his house. I'm saying you know? that, see, that's everybody that. knows what's going on with people. No. That lends itself to cognitive dissonance. That lends itself to the thought that you come over to my house at 2 in the morning, you know what I want to do. Uh, I'm not going over nobody's house at 2 in the morning. 2 in the morning, I don't think open is Waffle House and Legs. That's, that's it. What, see, that's an old uh -uh. stereotype. No, ma'am. That's, that's like you saying, well, if you would have had on a, a longer skirt and not had your breast out, then maybe he wouldn't have touched and raped you. So, no, 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 no. So you're telling me you go over a man's house at 2 in the morning? I will. What? I will. 
We gotta take a break. I will. I go at three. What? But that don't give you the green light to rape me. I didn't say that, but what? Okay, then. All right. See, there you go. That that lends itself to young boys and young men to think that that's that's the green light and that you know what time that is. If you take me 